Hi, this is Jin Jin Chen from the Cool Worlds Lab. Today, I'm going to tell you about classifying objects based on their mass radius relation. Mass and size are two of the most fundamental properties of any object. In astronomy, measuring the mass and radius of other worlds is very tough. But thanks to the tireless efforts of exoplanet astronomers, we now know fairly precise masses and radii of hundreds of distant worlds. When we have both mass and radius measurements, we can compare them on the same plot and see if there is any relation between them. In my recent project, I simply asked the question, is the mass radius relation the same for all the exoplanets? If a single mass radius relation does not fit for all, can we use the mass radius relation as a way to classify these objects? To answer the question, we selected hundreds of worlds with precisely measured masses and radii and put them on the plot. As we can see from the plot, a single relation would not fit for all the data. In addition to fitting the line, we also fit the transition points between each line. These transitions essentially means that we're performing classification of these worlds. The first transition happens at 2 Earth mass, which corresponds to about 1.23 Earth radius. We label the category below this point as the Terran world because the Earth is a typical member. Many solar system worlds, including Mercury, Venus, Mars, as well as the moons and dwarf planets, all belong to this category. Its neighboring category is labeled as the Neptunian worlds. It contains three of the other planets in the solar system, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The Neptunian world start to accrete significant volatile envelopes, which makes the dispersion in radii much bigger than that of the Terran worlds. The next category, Jovian worlds, is kind of special. In this category, all the worlds have almost the same radius, but the mass has increased for more than 100 times. This category contains the most massive kind of planets and brown dwarfs. Some classification regards planets and brown dwarfs to be different. Remarkably, brown dwarfs follow the same mass radius relation as the most massive planets. The last transition is at 8% of solar mass. Above this limit, the core of the object will ignite hydrogen fusion and the object shines as a star. Looking at data in this way leads to surprising implications. Brown dwarfs are merely high-mass Jupiters. The Moon shares the same relation with the Earth. Perhaps the most surprising result is that the divide between Neptunian worlds and Terran worlds is at just two Earth masses. This leaves very little room for super-Earth. Effectively then, the Earth might be the super-Earth we have been looking for all along. Thank you for watching the video. If you like it, please subscribe to our channel. Bye!